Okay, y'all, I'm big, I'm big, I'm big. Okay, today I want to talk to y'all about repropagandizing the black image. We have to take control over how we're seen in the media and how we're allowing ourselves to be exposed and used by the media. What I mean by that is that a lot of the negative stereotypes about us, we assist in perpetuating through, um, even though we're trying to be comedic, when we post negative memes about one another, when another race does it, it's very demeaning and they don't, they have a negative connotation behind it. So let's stop doing that all together. Okay. Let's stop supporting the negative image of ourselves. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to alleviate that. The way we alleviate that is we stop participating in it. For example, the stripper whole thought image that they act like we didn't get from them. The first prostitutes was white, baby. Trust me, that is not in the black community. Selling yourself or being raped for money is not in our community. Number one, why would a black man have to rape anybody when he can have as many concubines as he wants? As many sheep as he could trade for this broad. Okay? So let's let's think about that from a past point of view. You see what I'm saying? That's not us. That's not what we do. Even the prostitute in the brothels that are located in Africa now, those women are kidnapped and raped and forced into prostitution. It's a trafficking thing. It's not like they just naturally want to go be some hoes. So let's stop it. First, let's go with the stripper whole thought image. Let's get away from that. All my Instagram models out there making money because y'all fine and shit like that. Don't want a suit. Pretend like you're going to a business meeting or going to a business meeting. Capitalize off of that. I know a lot of stripper whole thoughts on Instagram that ain't doing shit but just being fine. And then they wonder why they went from getting 3,000, 4,000 likes to now getting 1,000, 1,500 likes. Because you ain't doing nothing different. Right? So do something different. Um... I got a baby cousin who um who's really hot on Instagram, but she has a degree in whatever public assistance do, public relations. I was like, shit, bitch, get you an internship at one of these places while you popping and while you hot. But you know, of course she ain't listen to me. And then right now she could be a top exec in a PR firm right now and still have her that IG image where she could still be fine, sexy, and have an actual career that will be dignant of a rich man actually wanting to court, marry, and impregnate her. So at, at some point, we're going to have to take our image back. We're going to have to take our culture back and take ourselves back to being better than what we're broadcast. Okay, all those positive women out there doing great things, all my degree holders, all my doctors, all my PhDs, you, need, you guys need to get on social media. Post your degrees. Post what y'all doing with y'all self. Because most of our professional culture, they don't participate in social media and stuff like that. They're not into that type of lifestyle. You know, nor am I. But we have to get out there in the forefront because the ignorant of us is taking over our complete image. And what they're doing is my freaking sense my myrrh burner, y'all. Y'all see the smoke? Yes, honey. Yes. I throw a little sage on it. Frankincense and myrrh. And it all burns together. And it just congeals into positivity. You feel it? You see it? Ooh. I mean, if you're going to inhale something, baby, in inhale something that's going to kill some shit. You hear me? Okay. So, um, like I'm saying, so we're going to have to repropagate our own image. Okay. And then while we're doing that, if we must post something negative and comedic, let's do it at the expense of another race. What's good for the goose, good for the gander. Why all the negative, funny memes that people doing fucked up, stupid shit is basically Negroes? And then y'all think black people are making these memes. Baby, no. No. No, 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 no. We're not making those memes. We probably making some of them. We ain't making all of them. And we didn't start this shit. What happens is the white people start this shit and then they give it to us and then we run with it. They tell us what to do and then we do what they say do and we run with it. So we have to repropagandize our own selves in the media. My black newscasters, every time, let me tell y'all something. If y'all want to know why every time a black person get murdered and shot, they always say, oh, it may be drug or it may be gang related. It's because those police departments and those precincts and those uh, governments that are down on the judicial branch, they get money. They get funding to participate in the war on drugs and the war on gangs. So whenever a black person dies, they say, oh, it was a war on drugs. Oh, it was a war on gangs. The drug deal gone bad. 
Because if they have a drug problem and a gang problem, that means they need some money so they can have more officers to fund the war on drugs. We got to get more people out there in the street. Well, I don't have enough officers to get out there on the streets to take care of this. Okay, well, here you are. You're approved for funding. That's why when that little black girl got her throat slit by that white supremacist or that racist guy on, um, I mean, sorry, that prejudice guy on that train, I believe it was in New York, when she got her throat slit, they post that gun up her. I think it was Naya. They post that her on Instagram holding her pistol. Gang related. Funding. Here you go. We run the world. They just profited off of it. We run the world for their profit, for their gain. The proof is in the pudding. You don't have to believe me. I might be giving it to you in an informal fashion, but everything I'm saying is is very factual, very factual, and and is and it's very rare research, not by me, but by other scholars as well. So you don't take my word for it. They get money. Every time a black person dies, even when a cop kills an innocent black man, it's still gang related or drug related or they bring up their past so that they can attribute it to that. Because they want that funding. They want that check. They get money for that. So you have to be aware of that and your own cognizance. And then you have to say, you know what? I'm not going to participate in that. I'm not going to post this because it's some bullshit. I'm not going to do that. You want to make a meme? Make a positive meme. Show black people in a positive light. That's what you do. We have to take control of our own image. Because we leave it up to media. All the women be post single uh, bitches. With five or six kids. With five or six baby daddies. And all the men will be the ones who left their kids. Don't raise their kids. Don't love their kids. Ain't nothing but a bunch of low life drug dealers. If we let the other people continue to. Um, put our narrative out there. We have to stop that. We have to take control of our own narrative, our own identity. The way that we are portrayed in the media, we have to do that. That's what Bill Cosby was doing. He always has done that. Even with this show here. But before they had the spinoff from this show, the, uh, the Bill Cosby show. Before William had this, before Bill Cosby had the Cosby show, he had the Bill Cosby show where he was a school teacher. Um, this shit is funny as hell. It was this one where he did this commercial, y'all. He ate all the goddamn cereal. That little white boy was like, stop eating. Just sip the milk off the spoon. This shit is funny as shit. Y'all got to watch, get, get this show. I don't let my daughter watch nothing that I didn't grow up looking at. If it wasn't on TV when I was a kid, she can't fucking watch it. My baby watched this. We got all the seasons at a good time. We got up to season four. Right here, this is what, one and two. We got three. I just got four from City Chance for $3.99. My daughter don't watch this bullshit. What else over here on her shelf? She got Malcolm X over here. Of course she got that. Um, but whatever. Anyway, so we have to control our own image. So, and back in those days, there was more of a positive image of us on TV. So that's why I make sure my daughter watches things that was published back in the 70s and 80s and early 90s. Because TV was going down the drain. People wasn't watching TV like that. So... If you watch, there's a documentary called 90s TV or TV in the 90s or something like that. Where they go into depth on how um, Fox 26 was going out of fucking business. So they hired all these. It's a negative. It's a lie that, that a black woman owns Fox. But anyway, um, they say that they have a room out here in Houston. I don't know why. But um, it's a reason why. Um, well, out there in Houston. I'm from there. That's why, but I don't live there anymore. But anyway, um. It's the reason why they do that. Because we are the majority. The majority rules. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the house. It's the same thing in politics. We rock the cradle, but we don't rule the house because we it's subconscious for us. Because we don't we don't see ourselves as the deity that we are. We don't see ourselves as the majority that we are. So um Fox 26 was going down a fucking shit show. They was going down. So you remember the nineties they had um, that movie with Lorenz that showed the South South Central with Lorenz Tate and the single parent. They had The Rock. They had In Living Color. Oh, they had so many black shows on Channel 26 at that time. And Channel 26 was beginning to dominate over the other networks. So then, um, I believe it was CBS or NBC, one of them, got that little uh, Friday lineup with Family Matters. And I've got that other black show and the other show that they had. Blah, blah, blah. They, so then, UP, Paramount was going down the drain. It got bought 
by some other tycoon that started calling the UPN, then they started exploiting black TV. You see what I'm saying? And then when everybody got back on, all of a sudden, um, Saturday Night Live started stealing all of the Wayne's Brothers shit, and then, um, you know, they dominated in the little sitcom industry or whatever. Um, then, um, so Mark Dwayne's moved their publications to skit movies, and then the white folks took that over. Look, Mark, the real, with the real Wayne's, please stand up and get back on television, because we sure miss y'all. We miss y'all. Don't let these white folks scare y'all out of y'all destiny and what y'all supposed to be doing, because I know y'all miss us too. Kim, um, the oldest Keenan and Ivory. We sure miss you, because we know you the brain. I'm not trying to say the rest of y'all are stupid, but y'all are naturally comedic. He's the one that really can put y'all together. Okay? And y'all, please don't turn white like the Jacksons. I've been watching y'all children. Y'all stop that shit. And Kim, you beautiful. I don't care what nobody tell you. We have to stop um, propagandizing that our Afri African genotypical features are ugly. Because they're not. We are beautiful. Imagine if my nose was skinny. I would be ugly than them. Look at this shit. If I look like that. Let me see if I can get something smaller. This pen. Imagine if I look like this. I would be an ugly ass broad. But what? Imagine if I had these cheekbones. Honey. Girl. If I didn't have these cheekbones. Baby. People getting surgery to look like us. While we getting surgery to look like double the us, they getting surgery to look like the regular us. Girl, stop. What's this? Where have we needed lipo? We naturally fine. If we get off this European diet, hmm, 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 we naturally fine. We just got a hold of fat transfer and all this stuff. Within the last five to ten, mm, not even ten, five to six years. White folk been doing that shit. They been doing it. When did Kim do it? Kim did it a long time ago. Right? So we we are going to have to get to the point to where can't nobody tell us nothing about our Africana selves. Because we love each other so fucking much. And we got to put that image out there. I know our actors. I know y'all broke. And I know, and I was hard for a black actor to get a job. Even a commercial. Stop doing commercials where you have to be in an interracial relationship. Stop doing movies where you have to be in an interracial relationship. We have to stop supporting that shit. Okay? Because that, that, that makes women. White women and Latino women. Get the room to say. Black men don't even want y'all. Which is not true. Because I know a lot of regular black people who would never date outside their race. Never have and never will. Never. Not even curious about that shit. I know a pimp that you, he, he's a real good friend of mine. I love you, Dev. Hey, Goldie. Um, he would never stick his phallus in a white woman. But he'll pimp the shit out of one. He said he paying them back for slavery, whatever. You want to pay him, really pay him back for slavery. Stop spending your money with him. Okay? And me and him been friends forever. I'm the one taught him to get with the woman he with. Keep her, get her, marry her, have baby, put the babies in her, all that shit. Look, y'all. We have to take a hold of our own image and how we're seen in the public eye. We cannot no longer afford to be put out there in the negative light. Now, now remember, the reason why they're doing this is because they're taking a page off of Hitler's book. If you haven't studied Hitler's political tactics, then you know Adolf Hitler, before he started laying waste to the Jews, what he first did was put out negative propaganda about them in the papers. He bought, he bought two papers. I can't remember the name of them. One was named after that internment camp he had, Auschwitz. Auschwitz? Auschwitz. Whatever the fuck, bitch, I ain't German. I don't give a fuck about no Holocaust because they didn't televise my Holocaust. So I don't give a fuck about nobody else's Holocaust. Bitch, Holocaust day. Bye. So, okay, I put the T at the end because, you know, in most languages that mean adios say or whatever. Whatever. Get out of here. I'm a linguist in my mind. I'm the new Webster. I'm the black Webster. The one that count. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, look. 
um, um, uh, whatever those two papers was that he bought. When he bought those two papers, remember he's an author and he's a natural artist. So he would write poems and poetry and he would do um, negative images of Jews and he basically made them irrelevant in society according to what society thought. He made them irrelevant. But let's not forget the Jews started that shit when they starved because the Jews um, a lot of their workers were German and whatever. They were mistreating them kind of like how the slaves were mistreated but not as bad. And so Adolf was like, man, fuck that shit. Yeah, they, they, they starved so many Germans. I forgot what part of wherever that was, but they started a whole bunch of them, which is really the catalyst behind this, which what made Adolf really, really mad. Because I believe his mama's sister, somebody died over there. Uh, where the fuck them Jews from, where they was supposed to take their ass back to. So, um, so, um, he put out, but for two years straight, negative bullshit, negative bullshit, negative bullshit, negative bullshit. Negative bullshit. Now, after he did that, then he started the internment camps. He started, no, then he started the, the labeling thing where they had to walk around with that yellow thing on their arm. Now, once he got them all identified, first he made everybody think negative about them. Then they made them wear an identifying mark because then they were all white. So they all were Caucasian, of Caucasian descent. They were only culturally different, which means these were Jews and then these were the Germans. So he made them wear that yellow thing around their arm. Once they had to wear the thing around their arm identifying them, then he started rounding their motherfucking ass up. This is like a five to seven year thing before he started putting them in camps. They had to put them in camps to use them for slave labor. Then he started killing them. He was experimenting on them and all the other shit he was doing. Meanwhile, he was steady writing books about this shit. So guess who got a hold of some of these books? Um, Bush great granddaddy or granddaddy who was at that time um, head of the Central Intelligence Agency here sent him more funding for his research because then they want to try to use his tactics, excuse me, his tactics to get rid of, to do away with their Negro problem here. Adolf had got a lot of American money. Okay? A lot of American money. See, y'all try, the Holocaust wasn't that long ago, just like slavery wasn't that long ago. So don't make me think, don't get confused like I'm talking about the 1400s, the 1200s, and all that there shit. No, motherfucker, I'm talking about the 1800s. I'm talking about the 1900s. Okay, we are still remember. I'm only three generations black. Okay, so um, we're not talking about too long ago, when 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 this all this took place. So great granddaddy Bush was damn sure alive and kicking, and so was the CIA. Okay, that's one of the oldest government agencies that they have in today's government, and and they took that because remember we we are Britain. We're on the British rule. We are a smaller Great Britain. We actually fund the dynasty. Because a lot of their hustles have, have fell short. But they getting back on their hustles because they got that black girl um, that they made that uh, that Dutch prince, where the fuck his name is, who married the black girl. They, so they using her influence over there in, Af in Africa and South Africa right now. Which is why that they, they was, was a political strategy. He didn't give a fuck about that black girl. He, they just needed Megan motherfucking ass to do some shit over there in Africa. Just like they need Obama motherfucking ass to open up trade and reduce the tariffs over there in Africa. Because Africa stopped fucking with us because they were so mad at Bush bitch ass. Anyway, so back to Hitler. So Hitler, mother Hitler had those tactics over there of negative propaganda, identifying. Once you identify, then we round up, then we use manipulated murder. So they thought they could do that shit here. The problem with that is these motherfuckers, people know who deity is. And around the world, no matter how bad of an image you give us, people start acting like us. Rocking with our pants down, getting tattoos all over our face, all over our body that really don't mean shit. All of the things that they try to say niggas do, having all these fucking babies, all that shit. These white hosts and these white men and these other races starting to do it too. I saw a tatted up Arabian. Let me tell you something. And it wasn't no spiritual shit. It was some bang, bang, gang, gang shit. Because they subconsciously know who deity is. They're going to follow us to the end of the motherfucking road. They're going to always follow us. Always. Y'all smoke a crack? We going to smoke crack too. Y'all smoking dro? We gonna smoke dro too, boss. Cause we the real boss. So everything they try to put out that negative about us, that, that's why that's how come crack didn't spill into the white community. No, 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 no. They saw us getting that high and they wanted that high too. 
Then they then they start trying to get because remember that white folk always want to be deity, so then they want to make their own drug. So then you have all this meth and bath salt and all this other shit going on because they want to invent some shit too. Now knowing we didn't invent manipulating the opium like they did, that was nature's first a um anesthesia. We that that would that bastardized version of of the opium plant would have never came from a black mind, ever. But it will come from a white scientist, not a black deity. And that's just what that's just the truth of the matter. So, so then, so then they then in turn want to go ahead, and now they want to get high on drugs and be fucked up and be low lights because we getting fucked up high as fuck being low lights. You see what I'm saying? So at some point, we're gonna have to realize that. We are, we run this shit. They really want to be us. And then we have to make ourselves, like in my last video, so exclusive to all it is is a want. Excuse me. They said a black man want to be white so bad. That's why he keep marrying white bitches and doing and having these mixed children. I his shit, but he'll never be accepted in the white community. He'll still be treated like a nigga. So why we can't let poor white trash always, or uh, poor rich trash, uh, poor white rich trash, uh, rich white trash. Yeah, always want to be us, but never let them in. Let them knock it out with motherfucking dough. Stop opening the door for their ass. Okay? Leave them over there. Leave them over there with their culture. Because, quite frankly, white people need to get, to get their shit together too. Okay? And they can't get their shit together steady fucking us. And we can't get our shit together steady fucking them and spend our money with them. Bottom line, point blank. Baby, trust me, black ice is cola. Hmm. Hmm. So then, when... So that's why that shit failed. That shit failed. They couldn't do what Hitler did. What Hitler did was white on white crime. Shit like that work on with white on white people. Shit like that don't work on black people. Why do you think that um, in the time of desegregation, um, the Polish, the Italians, the Germans, they all had to let go of their beefs? Because they don't like each other. They all had to let go of that shit. In order to deal with the Negro problem, because separate, it wasn't enough for them to fuck with us. We could still be separate and still be deeper than them and more harder than them. So if we can control the world, why not? The world was in peace, for harmony, and balance when black people ran it. Was it, was it not? Look at how the world was operated prior to 7-Eleven. Do your history. Look at how peaceful it was. Look how ingenuitive it was. You know what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden we want to go go across the Iberian Peninsula, Tyreek and the, and the Barber, the Barbers. I'm not sure how to pronounce it in the African dialect. Uh, took their ass over there across the Iberian Peninsula. They um built all them temples and shit over there in Spain and all the other shit where they feel like they did something. They ain't do shit. And we did all of that. They just still stand because we know how to we know how to fuck with that clay, and um and then uh Isabel got with Ferdinand, and um and they had to bring them two white people together because they was they was mortal enemies. Ferdinand was from over there, Isabel from over here. They got married and they, and they increased their forces and they was able to get rid of the Moors, um after being ruled over for like hundreds of years. But in the African rule, an African rule of those of Europe, we brought them soap, medicine temples religion well spirituality all of that shit all of that shit and how did they thank us by saying hell fuck that shit we want to be gods too they repaid us with the council of nasia and our the iberian slave trade and then their the little sister of the iberian slave trade the triangular slave trade White folk has always been drug addicts. They first, they first drug was salt. You don't believe me? Look at, look how many niggas. I'm sorry, of your, look how many of your ancestors died behind salt. Then after salt, after salt mines dr started drying up, then they they knew hustle was sugar. Sugar and salt is really what started the slave trade. It wasn't cotton. They didn't know about cotton till they got down here, and and these indigenous people here, which was the Grimaldi and the Mayans. Again. They look like this, not this. The Grimaldi and the Mayans taught them the value 
of the buffalo, the value of the um the cotton, which is how Andrew Jackson knew to kill all of the buffalo. To fuck the Indians up. Give me a home with a buffalo roam. Remember? We fought the buffalo. Because in, when, in times of adversity, when the weather starts to change, we would move. That's how come my grandma, my great-great-grandmother, who was full-blooded Muscogee, was so pissed off that they uh, changed the Muscogee name to Creek to the Creek Nation. And she was like, because we was not in one, one place. We may have been a monolithic culture, but we had no definite home. This whole land was ours, and we fought the buffalo because the buffalo knew where to go when this water was freezing over. They knew we would have to take our pilgrimage across land to find more food. I use pilgrimage for lack of a better term. I really don't remember a lot of my uh, great-grandmother's lessons, unfortunately, because um, I was even a kid and didn't appreciate the fact that I had ancestors living into their hundreds until now, and now they're past. And you know what I'm saying? But I'm getting back to them. So, um, yeah, respect your elders. Talk to them. I see an old ass woman. I'm, I pull. I start talking to them. A really old. If you got a, if you you got an old great grandma, go talk to her. Trust me, she got something to teach you. Sit down with your grandma. Talk to her. Ask her how it was when she was young. What she went through. What it was like. She'll give you more insight than a book can. Trust me. Trust what I tell you. So, um, we have to recontrol our image. We have to. Look what happened to, to I lost my tribal rights. I used, to, I used to check free education. You know why I lost my tribal rights? I lost my tribal rights before I even could really use them. Because they excommunicated all they fucking dark. They got rid of all they dark. My grandfather's mother was full Muscogee Indian. His, his mother's mother, which was his grandmother, my great-great-grandmother, and her man was full-blooded Muscogee Indian. There's only one seminal Indian escape from slavery in our tribal bloodline. Oh, bitch, I ask questions. I take notes. One thing I did do is remember who the fuck I was. I might was a badass kid and, and couldn't wait till my great-grandma took her old ass to sleep so I could run my motherfucking ass outside. I got to do is make her some hot cocoa and give her a slice of bread. Great-grandma Emily was asleep. Honey, I used to come my daddy. See, since my, my parents was divorced, my uh my great-grandma from Louisiana, she the one who talked talk to me about voodoo and stuff. She uh used to come down from Louisiana. My grandma, my daddy used to work from... 11 to 7, he was a, 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 a highly paid architect who helped design some of the biggest buildings downtown. But he ended up being a fucking security guard. My mother, computer scientist, ended up being a fucking teacher. With a doctorate in computer science. Let me tell you something. Anyway, we'll talk about the underemployment rate later. They want to talk about the unemployment rate. Then you got fucking doctors being fucking uh, substitute teachers, nigga. Let's talk about the underemployment rate. We went back to repropagandizing our community. Uh, my great, my great, great grandmother, she married a Seminole Indian who was a runaway slave, but she helped them out in the Trail of Tears. So it is what it is. But he was a Seminole Indian, and the um, what tribe was it? Oh. It had the the hawk is their symbol. Our symbol is the phoenix. Theirs was the hawk. Oh yeah, the phoenix goes way back. It goes way before Harry Potter and Dumbledore and them. The phoenixes was represented on the Indian tapestries. When the head goes this way is war, this way is peace. Look at yourself. Anyway, they dissolved the dark skin tribal rights. All those light skinned and mixed Indians who in that melting pot, remember the melting pot I talk about in every video of all the races, the people that are in that melting pot, they decide to go ahead and uh, dissolve the tribal rights of all the dark skinned Indians, saying that uh, we're attributing our lineage to the uh, all the runaway slaves that really helped their ass out when they was dying of famine. Helped them fight. But, well, help us fight anyway. Is that they were all um, Seminoles, they were all runaway slaves, and they don't, they don't have no proper lineage. When most of the Indians today are either straight up European. Are mixed with European and indigenous. If you look up the Cherokee Nation, they black -er than me. 
with fine straight thin hair. Blacker than me. Black as black. That's that Grimaldi. You know, if you look at the Mayans, if you look at the Mayans, they look like what's that tribe? Oh uh, shit. I can't think of that other tribe that um over there in the Mexican area. But they look like them. Because the Mayans are supposed to be a um a word from Asia, which is Africa's second civilization. Or what it's known as. Buddha was no fat white man, honey. Buddha, if you go go to Asia, I've been. When you go and you see all those tapestries and you see all those statues and stuff, you will see those Bantu knots on on a lot of on a lot of their artwork and a lot of their sculptures and a lot of their deity. Those are Bantu knots. Those are African hairstyles. Those are braids. But anyway, so we have to be in tune with ourselves enough. To know that what they're doing to us publicly, the image that we uphold, we have to change it. Actors have to stop taking demeaning roles. Um, Shonda Rhimes, uh, Lee Daniels, y'all have to stop writing things that depict us in a negative light. You know what I mean? If you look at the movies, when you see a, a, a movie based on a white crime, like that guy who stole that armor truck, it's a comedy. It's joyful. It's jovial. It's funny. But when you see a movie based on black crime, which also could be based on tree events like the depression after soldiers came home and dead presidents, it's gory, it's dark, it's violent, inherently violent, like they say we are. Right? Right? So we have to kind of re propagandize that. Start making lighthearted movies about black criminals and making dark, gory movies about white criminals. Those cheerleaders. That that was became robbers. That that was a fucking comedy, you know what I mean? That they come on, they make, white crime is funny when they do it, but when we do it, but when we have a a a, a criminal a criminal organization or a movie named after us, it's it's anything but. Look at Superfly. Superfly was a dope ass movie. I loved it. But look how 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 negative it was. Look at how negative the um uh, the dark skinned guys who was draped in the all white. You know what I mean? That's how they do us. That's how they do us. You see what I'm saying? So we have to take control over what we put out there. We all out my black actors and writers that are coming up. Get in, get into more juvial topics and portrayed in a different facet. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it so dark and gory. And then if you when you do write those dark and gory films, put white folk in them. Make make put some white actors in them. Put white actors in the negative roles and black actors in the positive roles. Because you can't have a motion picture without white people being in it. My tattoo artist who's also a painter, who's also a director, who's also a writer, 